Hello folks, welcome back. Pastor Bob from Place of Refuge. Uh, the title I have today is A Beginning to Ensure a Glorious Ending. How many want that? Amen? So we're going to start. We'll be in Proverbs uh, 1-7 to start with. And then I'll eventually get to Romans 8. And so join with me. Here we go. Proverbs 1-7 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But the fools despise wisdom and instruction. Now that word fear here, what do you, when you think about fear, what do you think about? You'd be afraid of God? It does It does say that in some of the uh, the words, and it, it means that, of being afraid. Being afraid to do something wrong. But it, here, it respect and reverence, piety, and to be revered. Now, this should be viewed as a positive quality. Okay, now sometimes fear in the Bible can be that they're running, or things that's a little different. But God, you know, God's good intentions. Let me give you another side scripture that goes along with us. We're going to start on the fear of the Lord here. Why? Because that's the beginning where it says, a beginning to ensure a glorious ending. All right. Now, this would be Exodus 20, 20. And Moses said unto the people, fear not. Why? For God has come to prove you. And why? That his fear may be before your faces that you sin not. That you sin not. You know, and that's the idea about fear. Now, this here fear, um, it, it means to revere, be afraid. It does say afraid. Reverence, honor, respect. To inspire reverence or godly fear or awe. That's what it's supposed to be. Amen? So that his fear, now in this one, in Exodus 2.20, that's the same Hebrew word. Okay? But here, back up here, the fear first, it's not. But this one said that his fear, same here in Proverbs 1, seven, we open with, it means respect, reverence piety, and revere, and that his fear may be before your faces. In other words, that your presence, the word face is a word named panim, and it means presence, okay? That's used a lot of times for the presence of God or the face of God is the same word. So it's, a, and that his fear may be before your presence or faces, all right? Now let's go back to Proverbs 1-7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning, and that is the first now, this is important. It's the best. It's the chief part. It's the choice part. It refers to a precious stone or some precious substance of great value. So, may I submit the fear of the Lord is the beginning of everything in a Christian's life. If you have the fear of God, you're going to be walking upright because you're not going to want to sin. Will you make mistakes? Yes. You know what I'm talking about. People nowadays, they don't think God cares about certain sins. Well, he does. You know, so they really don't have the fear of the Lord. I have the fear of the Lord, and I assume you do as well, because it's the beginning. It indicates the beginning of knowledge here. What's that? Well, it means our perception, skill, discernment, insight, and notion. This word, now get this, this word occurs 40 of its 91 times in Proverbs as one of the many words associated with biblical concept of what? Wisdom. So a lot of times here we're in, Knowledge, but it's very closely related to wisdom, which we'll get to another scripture. But it says, but fools despise wisdom. Here it is. That's when it comes up. All right. Fools here is one who despises wisdom, one who mocks when given, uh, or excuse me, when guilty, one who is quarrelsome, one who is licentious. But these fools, what do they do? They despise what? Wisdom. So that word despise, they hold it in contempt. I'm looking at my notes here because it's important. Hold is insignificant. They don't think it's a big deal. They show despite towards it, you know? Despise what? Now, let me. I'm going to use wisdom to tell you what it says in Hebrew. Wisdom, they despise wisdom in administration. They despise wisdom in prudence and religious affairs. And they despise wisdom in ethical and religious matters. Okay? And, if that's not enough, and instruction. Now, that's your discipline, chastening, correction. Those who are... Um, Wise receive instruction. How many would you realize? I like to be. I want to be a wise man all the time. And so you, you, you got to, you got to listen. You got to understand. But fools reject it, and that's what's in this verse. You know, I like discipline and stuff. You know, I don't necessarily like getting spanked or anything by the Lord, but you know what I mean. You know, his chastening is good. So the unbeliever is oblivious. They don't care. They're lacking knowledge or awareness. They don't give a rip what the heck. God says, and that's not it's that's not good. That's a fool, if you will. They don't even care. Now, here's one in Luke. Now, this is Luke uh, 12, 5. A couple things on fear. All right, Luke 12, 5 says, But I will forewarn you whom you shall fear. Now, listen to what it says. Luke says this. 
fear him which after the has killed, after you had been killed or die, has power to cast you into hell. Yeah, I say unto you, fear him. Amen? Now that's three times here in the same thing, but it's all the same word. It means to terrify, frighten, or become fearful and afraid. That's what I mentioned before. It does mean that. But now we're in the New Testament. Hebrews 10.31. You probably heard this. There was countless sermons on this one. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God. Ooh, that word fearful means inspiring fear, dreadful, terrible, and horrifying. So it's a little different than Luke, but it's right in the same realm. So the fear of the Lord is the beginning of everything. <clears throat> if you and I have fear, um, we're going to protect God's heart. Somebody mentioned that to me, and I... I, I I grabbed a hold of that, and I, I applied that. What does it mean to protect God's heart? That you wouldn't do anything to hurt him. Just like when you, your spouse is your girlfriend, your sons and daughters, whatever the, the case may be, that somebody that's dear to you, you know, you would protect their heart. You wouldn't do anything to hurt them. That's the concept that we're, I'm trying to get across here. Protect the Lord's heart. Amen. Here's another one here. This is Psalm 111, verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of what? Wisdom. There we go. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments, and his praise endureth forever. Now that word fear, this is exactly the same word used in Proverbs 1.7. It means respect, reverence, piety, and be reversed. Is Once again, and it's the same thing. It is the beginning. It's also the same. It's the first, the best, the chief, the choice part, the beginning of what? Now here, before it was knowledge, and they're very closely related. But now we have wisdom. Now listen to this. Skill in war. Wisdom in administration. Prudence in religious affair. Wisdom in ethical and religious. It's very close to knowledge. They go hand in hand, to be honest with you. But think about that. It, it gives you skill in war. May I submit, you and I are in a war with the devil. You, you know, because he's our enemy. So God gives us wisdom. You stay close to him. He's going to give you wisdom how to fight the devil. Amen. The weapons that we fight, fight with are not carnal. On the contrary, the what? They're mighty through God. What? Pulling down strongholds. Praise the Lord. Amen. So we have wisdom here or in a good understanding. Now there where we have prudence, insight, and understanding, good sense. Now listen to what my Hebrew word dictionary describes this word. And it was it's about that long, you know, but it was it's really important. It says a masculine noun meaning intelligence, good sense. This intelligence is more than just mere book knowledge. Take note of that. Or learning about a particular subject. It has a greater significance and means insight or understanding. Amen? May I submit, you'll have more greater understanding of God's Word, too. Amen? You want to do that. A good understanding have all that they do His commandments. All right? Do you think the, the Old Testament is still applicable today? I hope you do. Because it is. It's the Word of God from Genesis to Revelation. Amen? Now, we're under grace, and I get that. So we're not under the law. So there's a change there. But still, the Ten Commandments are still applicable. How many think that thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not kill? How many of you think that's a great idea? I do. Amen? So here we go. A good understanding to have all that they do is commandments, how they deal with it, and act with effect, to attend to, put in order, and to be observed. All right? The praise will and must continue forever. There is a scripture that locates a man or a woman who will miss this knowledge or wisdom in their lives or fear. You know what that is? You know, that's what it said here. The praise will must and continue forever. That's what it says here. Here's what. It, here's the, the scriptures that I'll say. I'm going to say it again. A man or a woman who will miss the knowledge or wisdom in their lives. It's Proverbs 21.2 to start with. Every way of a man is right how? In his own eyes. But the Lord pondereth the heart. Every way of a man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord pondereth the heart. Every way. Every way, every road, every journey. You know, uh, let's see, what's the other one? Course of life is right in his own eyes. That word right means they think it's upright and correct and pleasing and correct and straight. Well, in his own eyes. Okay? His own mental and spiritual perception. Or faculty, excuse me. But the Lord, Yehovah, and that does in Hebrew, it starts with a Y, the existing one, the proper name of the one true God, he pondereth. Or, you'll see in your Bibles, New American Standard, some will say, the Lord weighs the heart. Well, it's here as well. 
The Lord ponders, he weighs, he tests or proves what? The heart. Now that's where all of our seed of emotions and will comes from. You know, it's interesting. Let's play a little game with you here. Let's assume that I grabbed all the politicians in the United States and I put them into a big stadium. And I came up and I said, there's a lot of good politicians and there's a lot of bad politicians. I lay odds that almost everyone in there would probably say, well, I'm one of the good ones. Why? Because every way of a man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord pondereth or weighs the heart. We always are a cut above what we really are. You know, that's why we were sinning when God said, for all of sin and fall short of the glory of God. All. That means you might be a good person, and I don't doubt you are. But it's about what God thinks is wrong and right. Amen. It's not what we think is right. It's what he thinks is right and wrong. We needed a Savior. Once you're forgiven, you're forgiven. Now we need to walk in it. That's where the beginning is. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. For fools despise wisdom or knowledge and instruction. Okay. Now, here's another one that's very close to that. This is Proverbs 16.2. All the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes, but the Lord weigheth the Spirit. All right, so all the ways. That's the same one as Proverbs 21, 2. Every way, every road, every journey, or every course of life are clean. And here's, now this is really something. Clean means pure. It means clean, pure, and righteous. So let's put that in. All the ways of a man are righteous or clean and right in his own eyes. Well, in his own eyes, yeah. In God's eyes, now we might be falling short. That's why it's important to have the fear of the Lord. In his own eyes or his own mental and spiritual faculties. But the Lord weigheth, this is the same word as pondereth, they're synonymous, it's the same thing. One says pondereth, one says weight, and then the weight in the Hebrew in the first one, it'll say, or the pondereth, it'll say weight, and then under the pondereth, it'll say weight. And it's interchangeable. Now, I want to go to Romans chapter 8, verse 5, and grab this here. This is a great, great group of scriptures. If you have the time, I would encourage you to read the whole chapter. But I'm going to start from verse 11, or excuse me, verse 5, and go to verse 11. All right, so here we go. For they that are of the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they are of the Spirit the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they are in the flesh cannot please God. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so, that be the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man not have the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Verse 10. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. And finally, this is a famous scripture here in verse 11. But if the Spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal body by his spirit that dwells in you. This is this is a great bunch of scriptures here. I'll try to run through these quickly here. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that after the spirit the things of the spirit. Really, that's where it boils down to. You're either in the flesh or in the spirit. All right? After means you're down from or according to. It indicates from a higher place to a lower place. So if I'm, if you know, so I, if I'm at a higher place, my after flesh is a lower place. Now let me tell you what that means. It's the sensuous nature of man or woman. It actually says in the Greek, the animal nature of man. Now that's a bad indictment if we're like that. It's like an animal nature. I don't even want. I don't want. You know, when we say he's like a big weightlifter, you know, we say he's an animal. Why? Because he's so strong. But that, you know. And this is a negative. It's not the animal, animal nature of man. We're not talking good. This is of the flesh, you know. And here's why it says that. Flesh here denotes mere human nature, and it says the earthly nature of man. Here it is, apart from di divine influence, and therefore prone to sin, and what? Prone to God. Now hang on to that, because I'm going to repeat that quite a few times here. So they do mind. Now that mind, it says they do mind the things of the flesh, or after the flesh. They flesh do mind, excuse me. The mind here be of the same mind or uh, agreed together. You cherish the same views. You know, like begets like. You've heard that before, you know. The things of the flesh, the earthly nature of man. What is it again? Apart from divine influence and therefore prone to sin and opposed to God. That's what it is. So it's not good. But they that are of the spirit, 
pneuma, if you will, the divine spirit who will impart knowledge of divine truth. Amen. The spiritual is man's, or excuse me, the spirit is man's immaterial nature, which enables him to communicate with God and also the spirit. Gives us a communication. Amen. So this word, now listen to you. This word here, if you want to look it up in the Strong's, I would encourage you, 4151. But in my word, Greek word dictionary, this is four and a half pages. I mean solid, full, big, huge pages, pages in interpretation. So I just picked out, you know, something for the highlight here. If you, if you want to do more extensive, it's 4151. I'd encourage you to do it. It's probably real powerful. So it, it, it's, it means it's very impressive, but it says to be carnally minded. In is death. Now I want you to think about that. To be carnally minded is death. Now this is the word of God, my friends. If is it death? It does it mean death? It does. It's death. But the spiritually minded is life and peace. All right. So what's carnally? Now that is the same Greek word that I mentioned earlier as the word flesh. Here it is again. The earthly nature of man, apart from divine influence. Who's divine influence? God. And therefore, what? It's prone to sin and opposed to God. To be carnally or that way, prone to sin and opposed to God, minded is what one's in the mind and the thoughts and pur purposes is death. Now, that is the misery. Now, I, when, when I, you know, you've, there's been people out there, my friends, that says there's no hell. Have you heard that before? That is about the, the biggest devil's lie in the world. There is a hell, my friends. Now, and I'm going to tell you what this says. This is right in the Greek. This is not my opinion, like all this other stuff is in the Greek. It says, to be carnally minded is death. And I said, period. Death. Here it means the misery of the soul arising from sin. Now listen to the rest of it. Which begins on earth, but lasts and increases after death of the body in hell. Those are the ones, you know, we're talking about the ones that have not accepted Christ as their Lord and Savior. In the widest sense, here it is again. Death comprising of all miseries arising from sin, and sin does cause misery, I know you know that, as well as physical death, as the loss of a life consecrated to God. In other words, you, you miss that, and, 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 you, and you're, not, you're not blessed, okay? It, it takes physical death, a loss of life consecrated to God and blessed in Him on earth, He's going to be blessed, to be followed by wretchfulness, wretchedness in hell. Now I'm going to repeat that because I stumbled a little bit. In the widest sense, death comprising all the miseries arising from sin, as well as physical death, as the loss of a life consecrated to God and blessed in Him on earth to be followed by wretchedness in hell. Those are two scriptures. They say it right in there, or the interpretation, it says it right there. Right in hell. There is a hell. Amen? And if you look at the word perish, I believe it's in John 3.16, you can look it up at 6.22. It does say metaphorically to be <laughs> eternal misery in hell. Because if you're accepted in Christ, you're not worried about that. But those that are not, they need to concern themselves. We all need to be saved. But it says to be spiritually minded is life, the zoe, the absolute fullness of life, both essential, ethical, life real and genuine, a life active and vi vigorous, devoted to God. Now that's a mouthful, but listen. It's those that put their faith and trust in him. Okay, they're spiritual. You know, they're going to have good, you know, even in this world, your life is going to be better because you're not going to be doing the things that's going to destroy you. On the contrary, you're going to be doing things that's going to bless you. Remember the title, you know, a beginning to have a glorious, to, or to ensure a glorious ending. All right, so this is life and peace. Now that word peace here is irene. It looks like Irene with an E, but it's pronounced Irene. Now here's, and again, my friends, I'm just giving you the highlights. It says of the Messiah's peace, which is the greatest, I think. It means peace of mind, tranquility, arising from reconciliation with God, which is a good thing, and a sense of divine favor. We have favor with God because we accepted Christ. Amen? Peace between individuals and harmony. We can get along better with people because we know we got to change. So God has said, now here's what it said too, is a sideline. God is said to be a God of peace. How many know that's true? It's true. Not as one who needs peace, which he don't. Why? But one who disposes peace. That's what it means. He expects peace of his people, meaning the absence of confusion. Who's the author of confusion? Amen? You know it is. It's the devil. 
So we have, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Life, zoe, and peace, irena. The Messiah's peace. Now, verse 7. Because the carnal mind, why? Is it, what's, what's the problem? Is enmity against God, which is true. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can it be. Why? Because the carnal or what is established fleshly is enmity. Now that is hostility, hatred against who? God. Now there's James 4. Let me read this to you. James 4. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Now let me clarify a couple things. We all live in the world. It's what we do with our walk that makes the difference. Amen? You and I have to be here. We're not going to, you know, God hasn't come back yet. When he comes back, he's going to take us up with him. But until then, we need to walk worthy of our calling. So if we're going to be a friend of all the world's, you know, there's a lot of things that's legal, that's illegal in God's eyes. Amen? The Bible talks about the deeds of the flesh. I did that here a few times ago in Galatians 5. You know, and I would recommend you go back and read Galatians 5. Those are the ones, God, there's a spirit in the flesh. So we don't want enmity. So we don't want to be an enemy of God. So we have, because the carnal mind is enmity against God. Why? For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can it be. It doesn't care. Amen. Your flesh doesn't care. Not subject means it's not going to arrange under or be, it could be subordinate. It means to submit to one's control and to yield to one's admonition. So it's not, sub not subject to the law of God. Neither can it be. Why? Because you're in the flesh. Amen? So it, it, it clarifies that. So then, they that are in the flesh, remember, this is the earthly nature of man, apart from divine influence, and therefore prone to sin and opposed to God. They are the ones in the flesh. Cannot, cannot, my friends, please God. To strive to please, to accommodate oneself. Now listen to this. Oneself to the opinions of and desires and interests of others. Who's the opinion and the desires and interests of others? It's God himself. So to strive to please. Amen? Now here's 1 first, first Thessalonians 2, 4. I almost got tongue-tied on that. This is what it says. That as we were allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel, even so we speak, not as pleasing men, but God which trieth our hearts. Now that the reason I put that in here, this is exactly the same word as what we just read in, in verse 8. They that are in the flesh, remember, is the earthly nature of man, cannot please God. And it's the same word. Not as pleasing men, but God which trieth our heart. Pleasing here is the same word. So, you know, if you're in the flesh, you're not pleasing God, my friends. Now, I'm not talking about making mistakes. I want to clarify that. You know, we all make mistakes. But, you know, 1 John 1, 9, confess your sins and he's faithful to forgive you. Just move on. Verse 9. But ye are not in the flesh. Amen. But in the Spirit. If so, be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have, have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. So if you're born again, you belong to God. If you're not, you don't. And if Christ be in you, here we go. The body is dead, glory to God, because of sin. Because the spirit of life, because of righteousness. Now this is a very famous scripture here, verse 11. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by the spirit that dwelleth in you. Now that word quicken means to cause to live, make alive, give life. By spiritual power to arouse, invigorate, to restore to life, endued with new and greater powers of life. May I submit, it is good to be uh, a Christian. You know, I know it's not real popular these days, and they think we're all crazy. But you know what? I'll be a fool for Christ any day. How about you? I'm sure you will. They all think we're nuts. But you know what? Amen. But you know, I want to share this with you. Just at church the other day, somebody got saved, come out of all kinds of stuff. Praise God. That's why I'm doing what I'm doing, and I trust you're doing the same thing. So I hope this ministered to you. Um, remember, the fear of the Lord is the beginning. Amen. So God bless. Father, I pray you bless them, strengthen and encourage them. I give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, my friends. I'll see you next week. Take care. Right under 25.
time we got it, it'll be about 30. Like 24.55. Wow. Well, so those are only 30 minutes, so I'm doing good. Try to keep it under that. 